Hello and welcome to the Majlis podcast, Ready for Pre Deliberties, current affairs talk show focusing on Central Asia. I'm Mohammed Tahir, host of the Majlis and Ready for Pre Deliberties media manager here in Washington, D.C. The news about the military presence of China in Tajikistan has been on and off in the news, but recent signs indicate that not only China is there, but Chinese base is in full swing in the country. Now, our own Tajik service gets hold of new details indicating that the base is in fact expanding some details about what they may be up to there and the way things are changing since the western backed afghan government was toppled in august so today we are here to talk about these new details and try to make sense of the significance of this development as china secretly slowly but surely infiltrate central asia's security space to discuss all these i'm joined by sirojitin tolibov the managing editor of radio azadi the tajik Service of Ready for Radio Liberty, Reid Standish, the author of China in Eurasia Briefing by Ready for Radio Liberty, Nadej Roland, a senior fellow focusing on China's grand strategy at the National Bureau of Asian Research, and Bruce Panier, the editor of Ready for Radio Liberty, Central Asia Blog, Kishlok Awazi. Thank you, colleagues, for joining us today. I guess uh, since the report was published, it's, it's picked up by a couple of uh, other platforms, so I think I will try to keep the conversation very focused on two points that I raised at the beginning to not repeat ourselves. So new details about the base. Srojitin, what you can share with us in terms of your new findings about this secretive base uh, out there in the in the Wuhan corridor? Now, this military base, let's say it's, it's a military location, is based on a remote area close to the Badakhshan borders of Tajikistan. And it has been existing for at least five years, over the last five years. Um, and uh, it has been constantly expanding, and uh, you can see it on the satellite images as well. Yeah. And uh, our investigation, recent investigation, was based on a journalist's uh, view who recently visited uh, Badakhshan province mm. and uh, spoke to locals mm. Uh, based on several sources, different sources, different from each other, independent sources, and of course, um, based on that, including the so officials from the power agencies who decided to remain silent, uh, mm. to speak to off the record, mm. of course. And um, this military base is, uh, of course, is expanding in a remote mountainous area. And it seems that these are the first signs that uh, intentions of China towards Central Asia and uh, recent changes in Afghanistan increasing and uh, becoming uh, very serious. Mm -hmm. So we understand they are putting up, I guess, new infrastructure there. Yes. The, the report by Reed Standish, our colleague, uh, also speaks about uh, drones, patrols, and new outposts. So tell us in which ways it's it's expanding. It is it's, the number of militaries are also it's increasing. Mm. People who cross the border, uh, drivers have been also mentioning about that. We have seen videos as well sent by people who live on Badakhshan showing that they hard military hardware, uh, Chinese, uh, mm. thousands of them. Mm. And uh, these are all signs that, you know, China is increasing pressure, you know, presence on uh, remote areas that's uh, bordered with Tajikistan. Hmm. Very interesting. And very close to Afghanistan as well, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. So, Reid, you have been closely watching this development there. So, in terms of the expansion, what we heard from Sirajitin, I mean, there is something going on in that spot for the past five years, as Sirajitin said. But now we are talking about this new expansion and new details about the expansion. So, the expansion stays with the same spot that we noticed in the first place or it is it's expanding beyond that specific territory from, from what we know it, it's still located to this you know locale south of a, a small village it's called Shamak hmm. and it's very close to the the border with Afghanistan but in terms of scope and what is actually going on there you know there's you know more surveillance Chinese technology those sorts of things popping up the use of drones I mean that was something we mentioned in the report many people had seen drones talked about the use of drones you know exactly who is flying them is that 
Chinese drones that have been sold to the Tajiks, which there have been reports of those arms sales having taken place, or is this China flying its own drones? Where that's not something we were able to confirm, but I think it's an interesting development. It does show an increased scope, and and in terms of just wanting to have more eyes and ears out there to to monitor this, you know, what is actually quite a remote stretch of the world. There's not a lot of people in Wuhan corridor um, and in that area. You know, for the base itself, I mean, I think it's quite um, calling it a military base. It, it, it is. It's but it's it's quite modest, I think, compared to what most people would say. You know, we don't know exactly how many personnel are there, but it's it's not a, you know, a massive contingent. This is something was originally, from what we were told, the area of uh, a former Soviet outpost, which then there was a, have been reports in the past. The Wall Street Journal uh, reported on this in 2019 hmm. about a secret agreement between the Afghans, the Tajiks, or the previous Af- Afghan government, the Tajiks and the Chinese, right. allowing Beijing to, to refurbish a bunch of outposts along the border. And within that, which is something that we were also told, um, is that China is effectively controlling or monitoring, patrolling large sections of the, the Tajik border, you know, close to China, close to Afghanistan, but doing it on its own. It's just the Chinese. Um, so I think that that kind of raises some interesting questions. And I think it reveals a bit about what this presence really is. I know you're asking about you know, what are its limits? What is it really going for? And I think one of the interesting things there is, I mean, I think partly the Tajiks aren't able to patrol all of their own borders. So this is something that China is worried about. So it's something that it's Mm, invested mm. in and is willing to, uh, you know, to take on itself Mm, because mm. it's, uh, you know, a growing concern. It's linked to security issues in in Xinjiang and Western China, which is this longstanding issue, which is really just growing and is set to amplify given everything that's happened uh, in Afghanistan since Mm, August. mm. Yeah, we are going to talk about that. And on the other hand, China is also kind of flirting with the Taliban and apparently Taliban uh, moved away those Uyghur militants from the the spot, which is uh, next door in the Afghan side of the border. But we will talk about why and uh, reasons uh, a little bit later. Mr. Rajatin, again, one, one more uh, point from you. Um, you know, as you said, we knew that there is a Chinese base of some sort there for, for the past five years. I mean, I'm just kind of trying to understand the reason why you decided to follow up on this. Was there anything that you guys were alerted by so that you decided to follow up what's going on there? How did you guys notice that expansion? The thing is, um, there have been persistent but unconfirmed rumors, Hmm. especially from the local people, those who go to China, uh, those who live close to the Wuhan area. And uh, they've been telling us that uh, they've seen, you know, Chinese militaries, you know, cities growing up, you know, after Tajikistan gave uh, some plots, uh, areas uh, to China. These rumors have been increasing constantly. And plus, you know, they have been talking about the remote areas where Uyghurs from Afghanistan can go to infiltrate into uh, Chinese territory. But these were based only on rumors. Mm. And then our correspondent went there, stayed there for more than a week, and uh, he spoke to several people, you know, officials who decided to, to reveal off the record, of course, that we understood that that was an outpost and the infrastructure is increasing, although it is still modest. But you have to be in your mind that, you know, uh, we're talking about, you know, so one of the toughest uh, remotest yeah. places on earth mm. and after that you know so we started talking to to people even students uh, and it has been you know so uh, these rumors that turned out to be true so you were and, uh, you were getting uh, it is not surprise for many tajikistanis that uh, these days uh, there are so many mm. chinese companies in tajikistan uh, you mm. can see huge massive investments into mm. the economy of tajikistan especially in the construction business yeah. in mining business you name it. And uh, of course, uh, the, the appearance of uh, Chinese military on the border mm-hmm. was the cause of concern for the local people because they don't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, there have been military exercises, joint uh, bills uh, between China and Tajik militaries and interior ministry officials as well. Right. So it seems that, you know, cooperation is quite strong. And mm-hmm. in my opinion, mm-hmm. top Tajik officials know what is going on over there. Uh, of course. They are in the world. Of course. I, but they, they try to not to reveal this to 
uh, general public. Of course, they have to know. They should know of that development. Um, one more uh, follow up on that. So uh, you said it's a remote area. I mean, perhaps there is no reason to establish an expanded outpost uh, military base per se. But what kind of an area is that? What kind of spot <laughs> is that? Like kind of describe us the, the surrounding landscape of that specific location. Frankincense, I have not been on those parts of the mm. world, but I have been on the Hindu Kush close to that parts of the world from the Afghan side in 2001. It is uh, uh, several thousand high mountains, you know, breathing mm. is also difficult. There is no, you know, passage. Uh, terrain is very difficult. Mm. And uh, it is close to, to several uh, borders of several countries, including uh, Pakistan, a strategic place, so Swahan, mm. and uh, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, China. It's very difficult to describe it. Mm. Okay. And Adish, does your reporting add anything into what we have been hearing from our colleagues about this uh, apparently an expanding outpost there, Chinese outpost? You know, I know we spoke about this, like, I guess, a couple of years ago uh, when And uh, first, it was noticed that China is doing something out there. But now we have some other news, t- details, developments, which uh, includes like, you know, visible Chinese patrolling, military patrolling around that place. Like Rit was talking about drones and additional infrastructure being built. What is your own independent reporting other than what we heard from our colleagues about this? Well, I'm, I'm a customer of those reports. So I, I am very impressed by uh, what the, your colleagues, journalists have been able to, uh, to observe through various people on the ground as was mentioned you know this is a very remote and very difficult to access area and so there's not so much you know international reporting on what's going on over there so every piece of information that we can get is really valuable my impression going beyond the the details that you have offered as introduction is also my my first reaction was that i'm not completely surprised either that this would happen so you're right uh, when we had this discussion to years ago it was something was revealed i think by the washington post and people were discovering that china was having this type of activities outside of its own borders and something that looked like a military base very unprecedented really and were again with partial information difficult to to access to so Now, your account of what's going on in this expansion and the presence of Chinese possibly military elements and and material as expanding is confirming that China sees the security of that region that really is bordering its own territory because the Wakhan Corridor is really the that little piece of stretch of land, very narrow and very difficult to access, but that leads to the border with China, with the Xinjiang province. So it has an immediate imperative to make sure that right. it's it's safe and, and secure. And it's, it's been trying for years to make sure that the, you know, the terrorists elements are not getting into China. That's I think that's the principal motivation mm. for for China to have this outpost uh, where it can observe, as Reed was saying, you know, having eyes and ears mm. and observe what's what's going on and make sure that nobody gets into the Chinese territory. Surely. But also, I don't know whether we can look into this as a separate development versus the growing Chinese influence on the other sector in the country. Perhaps we will get back to that a little bit later before. Let me also get, Bruce, your impression. I'm sure you have gone through what the Tajik service team there and subsequently read Standish's report, who just got published on English language of RF uh, website. So what stands out to you in these reports? Also, keeping in mind that we have spoken about this these two years ago when this was first revealed. Well, the fact that they're building this up and, and adding to it, you know, certainly says something about the about the permanence of the base, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we, we know that Chinese uh, members of the People's Armed Police and possibly other elements of Chinese security forces have been running cross-border raids along, you know, the, the Badakhshan border for going back almost mm-hmm. 10 years now. Um, you know, but this base, anyway, the fact that they're developing it, and I don't know, there's a couple things that to keep in mind here. The one is that certainly... 
as mentioned, this is a remote location. So this place, um, even though it is connected by road to China, is going to have to be self-sufficient to a great extent because they don't know what will happen during the winter. Avalanches, mm. heavy weather, things like that. You know, these guys could be cut off for, for short periods of time. Um, but, you know, it does speak to something that they're building this up. It means that this is not a temporary thing. In the eyes of, of the Chinese, yeah. this is not something they're going to disassemble next year when, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if they, they feel the security threat's been reduced mm -hmm. some way or another. It shows that they're putting putting some money into this. Um, Nadej would probably know more about the bases on the other side of the border than, than me, but I have seen this, I believe, a place called Tashkorgan that's mm -hmm. in Xinjiang, and it's also an air base that the Chinese have been developing at, like, you know, Three more than three thousand meters high, which is not not so far from this other Chinese base. So it seems the base that there or this outpost that they have in Tajikistan seems to be more of a is part of a chain of bases and and fortifications that they're developing that lead to the Tajik border and more generally the Central Asian border. But you know, you, like I said, you'd certainly have to look at the recent developments with this this outpost in Tajikistan is is suggesting that the Chinese are are planning on occupying that for some time to come. Yeah. Earlier, Trojiti, you said that Tajik authorities will have some idea what's going on there. But what about the Tajik media or the Chinese media in that context? Are they saying anything about these new developments that you were able to reveal? Remote so spot? far, they have never mentioned anything like that. But a Tajik media doesn't have even a clue. In Chinese media, mostly they, they talk uh, about uh, Tajikistan as a very exotic place, you know, mostly explanatory. There have been several articles on the Chinese media talking about, you know, beautiful women, about the marriages, it's about cheap weddings, such kind of things. But the general public view in Tajikistan is very limited. They know China via sport events uh, or, let's say, martial arts or uh, business, of course, uh, trade. Mostly mm. Tajik traders go to China to buy stuff and sell it in Tajikistan because they are cheap mm. and easy to sell. Uh, apart from that, you know, so, so far, although their neighbors, um, mm. Tajikistan people, general public, people generally have no clue about China at all. Yeah, there is a there's numerous questions here in terms of what does this really means about the future direction of Chinese military activity in Central Asia and how this secrecy adds up to any secretive intention that China might have in the country or in the region. So let's continue the conversation talking about these and many other questions very shortly. First, let me recap the debate that today on the Majlis podcast. I'm joined by Srojit and Talibov, the managing editor of Radio Azadi, the Tajik service of RFERL, Reid Standish, the author of China in Eurasia, briefing by RFERL, Nadej Roland, a senior fellow focusing on China's grand strategy at the National Bureau of Asian Research, and Bruce Panier, the editor of RFERL Central Asia blog, Kishlok Awazi. I'm Mohammed Tahir, host of the Majlis podcast here in Washington, D.C., and we are discussing the new details about the secret Chinese military base in Tajikistan. Nadej, let me start with you here. You know, you follow Chinese grand strategy in a bigger context, and certainly I have no knowledge of this, but certainly I believe that this might not be the first Chinese uh, military base overseas. So the question I have in mind is whether all Chinese bases overseas are surrounded by such level of secrecy. Well, the only official base uh, that China has recognized is the one in Djibouti. So yeah. it's a naval base mm. that has been officially opened in 2017. So for the rest, I don't personally, I'm not aware of anything quite like what we are describing now, meaning buildings and material and personnel, whether they are from the People's Armed Police or the People's Liberation Army, executing some civilians and uh, you know, reconnaissance missions on foreign soil. So why is it so secretive? I think it's mostly because China has this so-called non-interference policy or principle that it uh, repeats over and over, saying that it doesn't want to interfere with any country's internal affairs. 
And for a very long time, the official line was that China would never have overseas military bases because China is a peaceful country and doesn't want to have a military footprint anywhere. But of course, you know, things change and and China's uh, expanding interests all over the globe make this posture a little bit more difficult to keep and how to reconcile this need for securing China's interests overseas, including, you know, more and more Chinese citizens who work abroad, as well as, you know, infrastructure constructions, as well as businesses, etc., if you don't have any military backup. So that's the difficult thing that is for Beijing to reconcile. They are starting to think about ways to do that and having, quote unquote, creative involvement in, in various countries precisely to do that and circumventing the, the, the strict non-interference principle by, by saying, if we are going to do things like that, we're going to ask permission from the local government to do that. We will never do it unilaterally, which is basically what other countries do too. You know, it's not like military bases around the world from the US or from France or from other countries are unilaterally imposed on the local countries without yeah, yeah. prior negotiation and discussion and agreement, right? So. Yeah. I think what's interesting really with what's going on in Central Asia in particular is that this is contrary to, you know, Djibouti, which is far away from China. It's a, it's a naval base. It is supposed to secure its sea lines of communication and its energy and trade uh, in particular that transit through uh, those sea lines of communication. Really, what's, what we're talking about here is China's backyard, immediate backyard with an immediate security threat. And at sea, you know, the security threat is perhaps piracy, mostly, you know, the civilians of the U.S. Uh, Navy. Here, it's uh, the immediate possibility of having attacks on Chinese interests, on Chinese citizens that are more and more present uh, in the region. And how to also make sure that because of the change in government in Afghanistan and the instability that this is going to create with the growing militant groups uh, that are fighting each other and perhaps becoming a, a new haven again for mm. for terrorism, that those groups do not attack China and do not collide with especially Uyghur fighters to attack Chinese interests. And I think this is really the main concern. And this is one of the ways that China is now trying to ramp up its presence on the security, physically visible and physically present in this outpost to, to try to mitigate this risk. Yeah, of course, it is a little bit outside of our topic today. But, you know, Chinese citizens are increasing in Pakistan, too, where they are, yes. where they are building this huge infrastructure. And also, we are seeing increasing attacks against Chinese citizens. So yes. if, if this logic is true for Tajikistan, I guess we are going to see some infrastructure like this being uh, built in Pakistan soon, I guess, if that's what China uh, has in mind behind these secretive or not secretive basis anymore. Uh, it's slightly different for, for Pakistan, but we can talk about that if you want. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a kind of a different, another topic for us. Okay, so we understand there's a logic from China's perspective, what it is doing and why it is doing in that specific location, like sort of an immediate threat emerging from Afghanistan, especially in the context of the Taliban taking over the country and maybe some of those militant groups oh. in Afghanistan might uh, be left loose. That I guess, Rajatin, you are trying to say something, but by mentioning one thing, I will come to you. My thinking here is, I hinted about this a little bit earlier. It, yes, a military post, yes, specific uh, purpose, but it is just not this military post. Like the other day, uh, I saw a clip on social media apparently attributed to a Chinese TV footage in which a Tajik soldier fluently speaking Chinese and the, the context there was, the soldier was trained in China. And of course, this could be just a tip of an iceberg, Surajitin. What are the other sort of a military activity we are seeing in Tajikistan that has any connection, like the type of connection I just mentioned with China? I mean, I'm just trying to say is whether this is 
limited only with this part, or we are also seeing Chinese activity in the other uh, aspects? Yes, uh, cooperation. It seems that the cooperation are very close, but uh, they try to keep it in secret. But uh, as far as I know, there have been going on trainings, uh, exercises, mm. and uh, I know, as far as I know, Tajik militaries, interior of police officials, go to China for short term and mid term training courses, mm. education, and there are so many. A young generation of students, Tajik students, who pre-COVID uh, went to China for education. A new generation, when I spoke to a teacher, he said that uh, he asked his children to focus on learning Chinese language. When I asked him why, he said, uh, why not English or Russian? He said that the future is with China, he said. So we should know Chinese language, he said. Mm. So there is a feeling among the Tajiks that the future will be tight with uh, China. There are a couple of points there, Srajitin. Like in terms of the military-to-military interaction between Tajikistan and China, how this has been? Is there any change that you see over the past, let's say, months or years? In which way it is changing? Uh, So I haven't seen anything like that. You know, so I don't, I can't be sure that cooperation is very close of the developing. It is visible when we talk with uh, cooperation between Tajikistan and Russia. But Mm. when it comes to China, it is very difficult to assess. Mm. As far as I know, uh, several years ago, uh, there have been incidents when ethnic Uyghurs, Chinese citizens were extradited from Turkey to Tajikistan first. Yeah. Tajik citizens. And they have been sent to China from Tajikistan. Mm-hmm. So it shows that cooperation, security cooperation between the two countries are very close. So they they're cooperating, and it has been going on for a while. Right. And Tajik officials have been doing it despite all this criticism. Right. Right. Okay. I guess uh, uh, as rate, rate, rate. It's very too difficult to say it's because because we don't have anything in our hands. Mm-hmm. I guess Reid has some points on that. Reid, jump in, please. Sure. I mean, in terms of uh, military cooperation, Beijing does this. There's a lot of bilateral agreements that uh, exist between between China and Tajikistan working together. And then obviously a lot of this is happening through the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Mm, yeah. There's a lot of military exchanges. I know you mentioned this Tajik officer, you know, speaking Mandarin. I saw that clip as well. And yeah, that, that's, that's sort of, you know, it gets into the long term thing. Obviously, you know, we can't have a, a conversation about China's military presence without mentioning Russia. You know, Russia is still the military kind of external force in Central Asia, and especially in Tajikistan, where it has a base. You know, in the course of reporting this story, you know, I spoke to some people who were sort of aware of, you know, the Russian thinking of the emergence of this Chinese base. And, you know, China was very, very cautious in terms of how this was approached with the Russians, because they were aware of how sensitive of an issue this could be for Moscow about, you know, a Chinese military footprint and what Moscow deems its backyard and is something that, you know, as much as relations between Beijing and Moscow are certainly, you know, warmer than they've ever been in many levels when it comes to, you know, military, security, strategic things like this. You know, this is something that the the Kremlin is very sensitive about. And China's aware of this. So this was something in the story we had. um, Actually, there was a bunch of Russian, you know, leading Russian researchers who were brought over and consulted, you know, trying to gauge, okay, what would be, you know, Kremlin reactions to the emergence of this Chinese base? And then from what I was told from sources is that, um, you know, this was something that initially that, you know, Moscow was not in favor of, you know, but they also understand that, you know, China has its reasons. They understand how big of an issue Xinjiang is to Chinese security planning. Uh, they understand how sensitive the fear, the anxiety about, you know, Uyghur militants and the, the idea that they could come back and, you know, pose a threat internally on China. They understand the Chinese thinking of that. And so because of that, um, you know, Moscow's kind of played along and, you know, we don't see any kind of, or at least that we know of, any kind of cooperation, you know, between the Chinese presence there and, uh, you know, the Russian forces. But there does seem to be an implicit understanding that China's this base and a lot of China's security presence in Tajikistan is going to be limited to issues related to Xinjiang. And I think that that's something Nadej brought up, you know, talking about this distinction between People's Liberation Army, PLA, 
and People's Armed Police, PAP. So, you know, P PLA, that is, you know, the traditional fighting force of the Chinese military. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about in Tajikistan, a lot of these big military exercises, um, you know, the things that get put on TV and put out by state media, that's with the PLA. But if you actually look at, from, we don't know for sure, but that does seem to be something that was in a Washington Post report from 2019, that the forces at this base near the border with Afghanistan are actually People's Armed Police. Mm -hmm. um, granted, that's not confirmed, but that what that does tell us is that this is not something about grand military ambitions from China, that actually, okay, this is an external force located in a foreign country, but it's something that's very much linked to internal Chinese security, not about having a big uh, external mm -hmm. you know, military footprint. It's actually quite limited. And because of the role of Russia in Central Asia, I think that tends to limit a lot of what China can actually do. But then, of course, you know, looking long term, there are these military exchanges that are going on. You know, like Sarojin just talked about, you know, the, the kind of the generational thinking that China is the future for a lot of people in Central Asia, um, you know, if you want to have a leg up. And that could shift things moving forward and, and mm. potentially, you know, in a generation or two, shift the, the balance of power across the whole region. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking about. Like if the Tajik cadets, if they are going for military training in China, it's not going to be only about the language. It's also going to be about the military hardware. It will have so many different way of increasing Chinese influence, not only on the other sector, but also on the security sector. Uh, Bruce, uh, when other Central Asian countries kind of looks into this, you know, although there are lots of secrecy, but still word gets out, um, like we are talking about this, and I'm, I'm sure the Tajik service report in Russian language uh, are read a lot in the other Central Asian countries. So when they look into this uh, discussion, what do they see happening as they have very close collaboration with China? They have lots of back and forth with them. They have lots of their own concerns with China. So what do they see happening when they read a discussions like this in Tajikistan? Well, the situations for the other Central Asian states are a, a little bit different, you know, I mean, because, um, you know, Tajikistan does border Afghanistan and it is up in the mountains. And, uh, you know, you, you couldn't see a situation where the Chinese would set up some similar outpost in Kazakhstan. For one, there, there wouldn't be a reason. And for two, the population in Kazakhstan would, wouldn't. <laughs> just wouldn't accept it, I don't think. That's probably similar to what would happen in Kyrgyzstan, uh, I would imagine, too. Um, so certainly, they're aware of that. But, you know, um, uh, they're also aware, certainly in, in Kyrgyzstan's case, they're aware of what the mountainous terrain is like, you know, up there, too. Uh, and, and you know, let's face it, in Tajikistan's case, they don't have a lot of money. We keep coming back to the fact that this is remote and stuff. Now, the Tajik government, with limited funding, is concerned about problems coming across Tajikistan into its inhabited areas. The place we're talking about is, you know, to say it's sparsely inhabited would, would be uh, generous. I mean, there's, there's just not that many people up there, you know, and so... You can understand the Tajik concern is the Afghan-Tajik border. Now, not the Tajik-Chinese border. They don't have the money or, or the or the infrastructure that connects it to that area. Um, you know, so it's it's a specific situation there that I, I I think you know where the Central Asians watch and and maybe even some of them say you're a fool for letting the Taj the Chinese have an outpost out there. Uh, you know, realistically, the Chinese have their border with Afghanistan guarded. Now, if you if you block the street but leave the field open, then you know, people are still going to they're going to go through the field. And I think that's where the Chinese concern is, is they block their border with Afghanistan. But they understand that the Tajik government doesn't have the money, the other resources, the infrastructure to block the Tajik border with China to make sure and probably not really even that much of uh, incentive to, to watch the Chinese border with Tajikistan to make sure militants come across. So if the Chinese want it done, they're, they're going to have to do this on their own, you know, and, and really, you know, since they have the road there. You know, it, it's easier for them to do this than it would be for even the Tajik government to do it uh, because they just have to drive across from China. This base is not this outpost is located not far from the Chinese border. So it's easy for them to resupply it and everything. You know, whereas if the Tajiks, if they were willing to put up the expense for this, they, you know, it would be a logistic nightmare to try to get something up there and keep keep a, a outpost or a base running 
all the time. So mm-hmm. I don't, you know, when the Central Asians look at it, they probably are a little bit apprehensive about the fact that China has an outpost there. But then again, mm-hmm. like I said, it's really a specific situation here. Mm-hmm. So what, what we are uh, saying here is we see, uh, especially with regards to this specific development in Tajikistan, with regards to Chinese post, it will stay limited and stay limited to this specific region because of the given circumstances. And there is no room and no reason for expansion beyond what it is uh, in Tajikistan. This is what we are seeing. Well, you, you know, if you're, if you're suspicious about Chinese intentions, then, then you have to consider that, in fact, it, it looks like a, a toehold in Central Asia. Uh, you know, that's and there's I'm sure there's more than a few people who think, you know, this is only the start, perhaps, of mm-hmm. what's happening. You know, trying to look at this from everyone's perspective out here. And like I said, the, the Tajik government, what, what interest do they have to guard the Chinese border and to, sp- to spend a lot of money on guarding the Chinese border? Um, you know, not much. They have a hard time guarding. The, their priority is to ask. Afghan border. And of course, we know they have problems along the Kyrgyz border, too. Um, so, what, you know, where are you going to get the money and the manpower? Uh, and, and, you know, it really, Sarojadeen could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the only road that, that goes there it actually comes from the north. You can't drive east from Dushan Bay and get there through Harog. It, it dead ends not mm-hmm. far from Harog. You have to go through Murgab from mm-hmm. the north, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, whereas, like I said, the Chinese have a road that goes right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so if the Tajiks were willing, if they were willing to take this responsibility upon themselves and do it, it would be tough for mm-hmm. them to, to maintain some kind of outpost. And again, what's their interest in maintaining an outpost, a watch to make sure no one gets into China? It's a, That's a question of Chinese security, right? Yeah, I understand, understand that. But, you know, why China has to be there? Like earlier, who said, like, there are number of Chinese bases just across the border on the Chinese soil. If the intention is to protect the border, they already have all those infrastructure and border ports on their own land just across the border there. I mean, why they have to be in that specific location? What does uh, that add up? It's a forward outpost. It's, you know, it's a, it's a um, listening post, if you will, or something like that to see, to get early warnings mm-hmm. about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, don't forget that the, the People's Armed Police help establish a base in the Afghan side of the border in the Wuhan corridor. I have no idea what happened to that. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, we, there was news about that before there was news about the base in Tajikistan. These two places are very close to each other. I, I don't know what happened to that, but the People's uh, Armed Bruce, Police were there too. Is it okay mm-hmm. if I jump in? I can mm-hmm. add yeah. something. Good, um, please. So um, that, that was also sort of another detail that um, we didn't get to bring up yet of our of our stories. I mean, because that was also something that we have been told of how the cooperation, at least especially before the Taliban's takeover used to work, is there was sort of this trilateral cooperation between Afghan, Tajik, and Chinese personnel Hmm. in this area, uh, you know, moving back and forth across the border, sharing, you know, reports, things like that. You know, in terms of the base in the Wakhan corridor, I mean, obviously China denied that that ever existed, but that came about in a a report from uh, the South China Morning Post, uh, you know, the Hong Kong-based newspaper, But it seems that that's something that's not underway anymore, especially since the previous government has collapsed. Um, And that was another detail that we, uh, the Tajik service and myself were told, which is that, you know, that since the Taliban's taken over, they're... The Afghan, there is no longer an Afghan contingent represented um, in this area anymore. And now we could say, okay, is that because the Taliban doesn't want to cooperate on counterterrorism, perhaps? Or is this perhaps because the Taliban, you know, maybe didn't expect to completely sweep across the country and take it as fast as they did? And now this is just they simply don't have the resources to to put somebody up there. We're not exactly sure, but we do know that there isn't uh, an Afghan contingent involved there anymore. What about Chinese contingent? Why Chinese contingent? contingent cannot be there. You mean why why does it need to be there? If China is worried about the infiltration of Uyghurs from Afghanistan to its border, and the reason why it put up this uh, military or, or the base in Tajikistan is just because of that threat, then why base in Tajikistan? Why can't they have something like that in Afghanistan? Well, I think a lot of it, I mean, I, I'm sure that it is. A lot of it comes down to the host government. I think Tajik, why this exists in Tajikistan, yes, okay, we talked about all the, the Chinese motivations and rationale for wanting to have it. But I mean, it's because the government, the Tajik government says, yes, they want it. They want to, you know, play ball with China. And, you know, that puts them in their good books. They're more willing to get investment. It creates good relations between the Rahman government and family and Beijing. This smooths over relations in a lot of ways. You know, that, that it's different. Um, you know, Afghanistan's a different country, especially the previous government, you know, was 
relying on Western aid. I mean, having said that, the, the, the previous Afghan government did cooperate with the Chinese quite a lot in terms of arresting and handing over alleged weaker militants. This is something that's been reported before, you know, about, uh, you know, various types of, you know, training missions and things like that. So those those all did exist, but the, the politi- internal politics are all very different, you know, like, so, you know, Bruce was talking about all the other previous Central Asian countries, you know, I think Kyrgyzstan's an interesting example where, you know, China there is using, there are Chinese private military contractors yeah. who are allowed to operate in Kyrgyzstan, mm. and they're there. Whereas Kazakhstan doesn't allow China to do that. They don't allow private military contractors. Mm, mm, mm. And so China isn't able to do that. And granted, okay, we, Kazakhstan's a much more capable, uh, uh, wealthy kind of country when it comes to security than some of its neighbors. But I think that that really gets into you know, the question of why is it there? You know, partly it's because the Tajik government says yes. And it's partly also because the Tajik government doesn't have the resources to do this on its own. Yeah, I think that sums up our conversation to these. Unless I'm missing something in this conversation. Otherwise, I will wrap up. Uh, Nadesh, is there anything I have missed and you would like to mention? Otherwise, no, I think I, you know, everybody has, has very well explained it. And I think in general, you know, I think Beijing wants to have the maximum efficiency with the minimum effort or or minimum mm. footprint and certainly with the minimum military footprint and i think it would be happy to continue to let russia deal with those very hardwired security issues mm. and military issues instead of having to cope with it itself so mm. a light footprint what we're seeing in tajikistan is not necessarily a you know laboratory for things that are going to expand everywhere in the region. And I think what has been explained here is that local governments also have their say. They also have their own interests for accepting or not uh, for this increased Chinese security presence. China is doing other things, including training, as has been mentioned also, including training of policy and, and domestic security forces that add to this feeling of security for China. Mm. You know, again, you know, the ultimate objective is not for Beijing to provide security for the region. It's to provide security for itself. And so it's a very parochial objective, very narrow minded. And again, uh, with some self-imposed restrictions on what they want to do and where mm. up to where they are Okay. willing to go, uh, including with, with military presence. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we have to conclude the conversation here, but uh, we will keep a close eye on how things uh, proceed from here and assemble another conversation once Rajuddin come up with new uh, piece of information from that spot or elsewhere on Chinese activities uh, in Tajikistan or in Central Asia. So, with this, thank you very much, uh, Rajuddin. Terrific report. The managing editor of uh, Radio Ozadi, the Tajik service of RFERL. Also, Reid Standish, the author of China in Eurasia briefing by uh, Ready for Repair Deliberty. Nadesh Roland, a senior fellow focusing on China's grand strategy at the National Bureau of Asian Research. And Bruce Panier, the editor of RFERL's Central Asia blog, Kishlok Awazi. Thank you, colleagues, for your time today. And this is from me, Mohammed Tahir, host of the Majlis RFERL's current affairs talk show focusing on Central Asia. Until next week, bye bye. <laughs>